The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Now I am going to the one who sent me. Not one of you has asked, Where are you going? Yet you are sad at heart because I have told you this. Still, I must tell you the truth. It is for your own good that I am going. Because unless I go, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I do go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will show the world how wrong it was about sin, and about who was in the right, and about judgment. About sin proved by their refusal to believe in me. About who was in the right, proved by my going to the Father and your seeing me no more. About judgment proved by the prince of this world being already condemned. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, in the Gospel passage of today, Jesus is making very clear to his disciples that the time has come for him to go away from them. And it is a common feeling for each one of us, very especially when our dear ones, whenever they visit us from abroad or in our religious communities where we have transfers, when the time comes for any one of our members to be transferred to another place or when, it, when the time comes for a loved one to go back to his or her place, it is a sorrowful moment wherein we don't want that person to be away. And that is what is happening today in the Gospel passage when Jesus is telling that I am going to the one who sent me. And when his disciples were listening to them, their heart was full of sorrow. Because the company in which they always were, now no longer they will be in the same company. The absence of Jesus will definitely harden or give them a very sad moment. But then Jesus is reassuring them that in, unless I go, the other helper or the advocate, the Holy Spirit will not come. My dear brothers and sisters, when Jesus was with his disciples on this earth, he could not be present everywhere. He could not be present everywhere. But now, when the time has come, because he had prepared his disciples, he has prepared the foundation, he has strengthened them. And now he says, the Advocate, the Holy Spirit will be your helper. He will make things known to you, whatever I have taught. It is the Holy Spirit that will enable you to understand, will empower you. This is what Jesus is telling his disciples. But then the disciples are sad because they are not able to understand or comprehend what Jesus is trying. But yet Jesus is making them very clear that until and unless he goes, the helper will not come. My dear brothers and sisters, the Holy Spirit is our guide. The Holy Spirit is our strength. In moments of difficulties, in moments of anxieties, or in moments of troubles, or when we are not able to decide, we always pray to the Holy Spirit. Before beginning a retreat, or before preaching, or before any doing, we always call the Holy Spirit to enlighten us so that 
we do what is pleasing to God. And the Holy Spirit will never ever take us away, but will always take us to the right path. And that is the assurance of Jesus, not only to his disciples, to each one of us. Whenever we call on to the help of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit will never let us down. My dear brothers and sisters, there are three things that Jesus makes it very clear to each one of us in the gospel of today. The first thing that Jesus tells is, the Holy Spirit will convict men of sin. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, when Jews crucified Jesus, they did not believe that they were sinning. They only thought that they were doing or serving God. That is what they had in their mind. But later on in the Acts of the Apostles, when Peter begins to preach, and he says that you have crucified Jesus, the preaching of St. Peter pricked the conscience of the Jews. Now, what was the turning point? Oh, what led to the pricking of the conscience of the Jews? Where once they thought that they were doing good, but now with the preaching of the apostles, they are realizing that they have done something wrong. When we look at the life of St. Paul, he was crucifying the, the people who believed in Jesus. But on the way of Damascus, he was transformed. What is that that transforms us? It is the Holy Spirit. It is the Spirit of God that transforms us. The conscience of the Jews were pricked that what they did was wrong. And now they wanted to return back to God. And it is the Holy Spirit that first gave them the understanding that what you had done was wrong, but still the, the mercy of God is open. The Spirit of God, and that is what Jesus says, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, will convict men of sin. So my dear brothers and sisters, the second thing that Jesus tells is that the Holy Spirit will convince men of righteousness. Now my dear brothers and sisters, Jesus was crucified as a criminal. Because during the time of the Romans, any person who was crucified was considered as a criminal, which we are all aware of. And Jews regarded him as an evil heretic because whatever he spoke was not according to their likes. He was not preaching in their line. But Jesus was preaching what he was called or sent for. And therefore they considered him as an evil heretic. And therefore, they gave him the worst punishment, and that was crucifixion. But the soldier who pierced Jesus' side, he knelt down and said, Truly, he was the Son of God. Now, from where has this transformation come? Before crucifying, nothing is being spoken about transformation. They considered him as a dangerous person. They considered him as an evil heretic. And therefore they gave him the worst punishment. But when this soldier pierced the side of Jesus, he knelt down and said, truly he was. He was the son of God. From where did that conviction come? It came through the Holy Spirit. So my dear brothers and sisters, therefore Jesus says the Holy Spirit will convince men of righteousness. If at all that soldier was convinced that he was the son of God, it was because of the Holy Spirit. The third thing that Jesus speaks is that the Holy Spirit convinces men of judgment. Now my dear brothers and sisters, on the cross, what we see, we see that the evil is been defeated. And what gives this inner and unshakable conviction that we shall stand before the judgment of God? What is 
what give us that inner conviction it is the holy spirit it is the holy spirit that gives us the conviction that we are going to stand before the judgment of god and therefore jesus says that the holy spirit convinces men of judgment so my dear brothers and sisters the holy spirit is an important thing in our life we need to open ourselves to the promptings of the holy spirit we should not sadden the holy spirit because the holy spirit is given by god the father through jesus to each one of us so that we walk the path of righteousness so that we walk the path with conviction if we sadden the holy spirit we will not be able to be with god the holy spirit in today's term we can take it as a gps as gps guides us to our destination in that same manner holy spirit is sent as an as an helper to help us to guide us so my dear brothers and sisters in jesus christ let us open ourselves open our hearts and always seek the holy spirit to guide us and to lead us to the path that are level and smooth and that leads us to our heavenly father amen